myself and a buddy on my squad responded to an alarm. The incident location was an old office-type building that had been converted to doctor's offices. There was a pharmacy attached to it. Our dispatch received a motion signal from an upstairs office. Keyholder arrives on scene and we go in to secure the building. The stairs were locked behind a door that, of course, the keyholder didn't have the keys to. So we took the elevator up to the second floor. Not the most tactically sound option, I know. The elevator opens to a pitch black hallway, except for one overhead light at the end of the hall. We start checking doors, and so far all of them are secured. We get to the last office and sure enough, the door is unlocked. We make entry and observe it to be an unused office. The door opened into a sizable waiting room and reception area. There were about 10 or 12 exam rooms all cleared with no hiccups. We exit the office and immediately something seems off. That's when I realized that the overhead light at our end of the hallway that had been on was now off, replaced by another light over by the elevators. I look at my squad mate and he's completely white. I ask him what's wrong and he says, weren't all those doors we just checked closed and locked? I tell him, yeah, so? But he says, well, now they're all standing open. Sure enough, all the offices down the hallway we had just checked were now standing open. Pucker factor sinks in at this point. So we start clearing offices and securing the offices. We finish the last office and on our way out. Just before we turn the corner to get into the waiting area, the main door just slams shut. Then our radios start going nuts with some kind of static feedback. And now I just want to get out. We get back to the elevator and head down to the first floor to make contact with the key holder. Again, however, the key holder is nowhere to be found. I contact dispatch and request a callback number for the key holder so I can advise him of what we found. Dispatch states that the key holder was still en route to us and was advising an ETA of five minutes. I advised dispatch that we had already been out with the key holder and they requested that I give him a call. I call dispatch and she tells me there's no way we were out with the key holder. She states that the alarm company had only just made contact with one. Eventually, the real key holder arrives on the scene and I ask her about the man that let us in the building, the first key holder. She asked me to describe him, so I did. She states that sounds like one of the doctors that had used to lease the office on the second floor at the end of the hall. She then states that he had unalived himself at his summer home several days ago. I still won't go back there. A few years back, I worked as a security guard at a hospital. It sounds pretty cool. And it was, except for the fact that it was 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. I worked alone, and the hospital I guarded was abandoned. I was always a third shift kind of person. I don't get night jitters or scare easily but this place could do it to the best of them. Every night I would walk or ride a wheelchair through the halls that were supposed to be empty and unused. Every night I would end up having to close doors and relock them. I would walk one floor, move up to the next and continue on. I got a little shaky when, an hour after already walking a hallway, I would have to turn off the same hall lights and close the same doors again in the building. Or when I would be walking a hall, and then I would hear footsteps on the floor above me, doors opening and closing, elevators moving, floor to floor, phones ringing, nurse call lights going on. There were only three times I got the I hate this crap feeling. The first time I was checking offices on the fourth floor. There was a light on in a locked hallway. No surprise there. This hallway hadn't been renovated since the place was built short of electricity, so everything was from the 1920s. I unlock the door, flip the lights, walk out, relock the door and turn to leave. Behind me, I hear the flip of a light switch. Through the frosted glass, I can already see that the lights are back on. I left that hallway alone that night. The second time was riding an elevator between floors. I was taking the elevator to the top floor when, at about four or five floors, I hear laughing and muffled talking. It kept getting louder and louder as I got higher. The elevator makes it to floor five, and the doors swing open, and I met with absolute silence. Of course, every light on that floor was on, even in the patient rooms I checked high and low, and not a single living and breathing person was in that place except for me. Third and worst of all was just an average night. 
I'm on the lower level, locking a door in a corridor. The door had a glass middle, but on the back side it was covered by white tape. The room it led to was dark, and the hallway a few feet behind me was partially lit, so the glass acted like a perfect mirror. Everything normal. Key and lock clicks turning the key when behind me I see the full outline of a person walk past me in the hallway, clear as day, just a full shadow of a person just walking past. I froze for only about a second, and then ran into the hall after this supposed person. No one. Just silence. I had just started my second year as an Oregon State Trooper. I was riding with another officer when dispatch came on and said there was a call of a man holding a firearm to a woman's head. So of course we got there as fast as we could. When we arrived, we found a woman crying and repeating over and over, he shot me, he shot me. I bent down to talk with her and said, he didn't shoot you, but she just wouldn't listen. I asked if she had any family she could stay with and she said no. She wouldn't let us take her anywhere. So we asked if she would be okay by herself. She said yes, and we left. At the end of our night shift, we went back to the station and told the dispatchers and other officers about the weird call. An officer looked up her name and went pale. He hesitantly told us that a young woman by that name had been murdered by her husband about six years ago. The police never caught the shooter. We all went grim and tried to forget about what had happened. We eventually did until two years later. I was training a new officer when we got a call about a man holding another firearm to a woman's head. We headed over to the house and found the same lady. Our radios crackled as we approached her, but she simply pointed to the house and said, there, he's in there. We entered armed and found a man inside sitting on the ground with his hands in the air. I handcuffed him and ran his name and learned that this man was the wanted shooter. The man got 20 years in prison and we never got another call from that house again. Was it just luck that we showed up when he was there? Or was it the ghost wanting justice? To this day, it still creeps me out to try and think about it all. Prior to law enforcement, I was in college and worked nights as a security officer at the historic Blackstone Hotel in Fort Worth, Texas. The Blackstone was a luxury hotel when it opened the year before the stock market crash and depression, but it went to seed in later years. As part of my job, I had to do floor checks, including stairwells. I usually started at the top and worked my way down using the stairwells in a back and forth pattern. Since they were located at the opposite ends of each floor, each well had fire doors about every five floors. The top floor had a permanently closed restaurant, ballroom and bar, the top 10 floors weren't being leased to anyone at the time. One night I started my usual check at the top floor and entered the first stairwell. As I entered, I heard footsteps in the well and the fire door below me slammed shut. I just figured one of the local homeless had somehow slipped into the building and camped out, so I rushed to catch up. I was in pretty good shape, but never got closer than two floors to my quarry. The stairwell emptied into an entry foyer from the street that was locked at night. So there was only one way out, which was the main lobby and past the front desk. I asked the clerk night auditor where the intruder went, as he or she would have had to have passed right by the desk. The clerk hadn't seen anyone while posted in the lobby. After doing checks, I often saw the two main elevators return home to the lobby after taking passengers to their respective floors. On several occasions, I watched the elevators leave the lobby level when no one had entered and go straight to the top floor, then return to the lobby when the doors opened. There was no one inside the elevator. My boss at the time was a Fort Worth Police Department officer of about 30 years service, said that over the past 15 years when the stock market crashed, the hotel had averaged one unalived person per year. 